in uh, Worcester, Ohio. Yeah. And I was asked kind of, you know, towards the end, the last minute, so to speak, just to do uh, a brief talk on, and actually what I'm going to hope to do is to actually get some things back from you guys about uh, for future, like next year, a national meeting, to hopefully do a, a talk more on the health and wellness aspects of Paul Paul, right? So I was hoping to rely on you guys to say, hey, this is something I want to hear about, you know, uh, or if there's something you can think about along the way that you want to hear about from a health standpoint, health, wellness, uh, uses of Paw Paw, whatever. Things I can take back and do my research on and put things together. Um, so anyhow, but what I was, what I wanted to focus on, just kind of get a sense of from you guys to start with is, what, it, it, what, if anything, out of pawpaws have you heard or had concerns about something, anything from a health standpoint, wellness standpoint, something you might want to, you know, is there anything that, just that curiosity? Some of the stuff that's come up in the past is like the, so say as a producer, uh, issues with people getting sick from the seeds or getting sick from, uh, from the fruit leather, you know, like that's okay. an interest. That's something that you think, okay, well, from a liability standpoint or whatever, sure. you know, or, or bad experiences, right? If someone's bad like, experience. I tried it, and, man, I got violently ill. Ill. Yeah. That's not <laughs> going to help business, right? So, how do no. you get around that, or like a bit more of the science of that fruit leather phenomenon? You know, yeah. we talked about it, yeah, in Kentucky, a couple a little years bit. ago, but it just no. the surface. Briefly, briefly, I was there at that, and we kind of, yeah, they kind of hinted about that one. Uh, eating the seed, or you know, accidentally ingesting a seed, or whatever, and what what are some of the potentials there? You know, um, anyone heard about any of the neurologic issues? Something I wish I had a more concise uh, thing to just send someone. Say, and I kind of feel that way about like all research. It's just like at yeah. some point we all just say like, yeah, there's research, right, and we right. just talk about Google like some nebulous thing. Like I would really like a couple. Um, uh, well thought through set of arguments because I have my own opinions that I formed about it and mm -hmm. arguments I feel okay. are true enough uh, okay. and, and I feel fine about it but like I, I just yeah there are a lot of pushback I get about Papa and Parkinson's and all the other kind of neurological the, concerns. So Parkinson's is the one that we're going hit, to hit on and I'll talk a little bit about that <clears> one here. So uh, which brings me to, you know it's a, one of the things I've been thinking about trying to do here at some point is to when I to be able to do exactly that. Um, not a refutation per se, but something that really looks at this data that's out there about this issue of the Parkinson's, because that one is one that uh, uh, certainly has had some traction. And if anyone has seen it, have you seen anything about it or anyone else yeah, seen anything about it? So, on YouTube thing that I saw, I mean, he was dispelling yeah. myths about pawpaw, and then right. he said, like, you'd never eat enough pawpaw to, like, do it damage or whatever. That, that, sure. That's as far as I've seen. Sure. So, I mean, to say uh, briefly about this, so, you know, most folks have heard of Parkinson's. Uh, if anyone has seen anyone or shared family member or anything like that with Parkinson's or seeing a friend with Parkinson's. So Parkinson's is referred to as a, it's a movement, we refer to as a movement disorder uh, in the field of medicine. Movement being, okay, my control of my movements, okay, all muscle control in a sense. It's a neurodegenerative condition and lots of things fit into that category, broadly speaking. Uh, all forms of dementia would fit that. That's in the gray matter, you know, for the most part, right? The gray matter of the brain, the thinking, cognitive, processing part. Uh, thing that we think about associate with Alzheimer's, frontotemporal dementias, all kinds of dementias, okay? Vascular dementias, alcohol dementias, you name it. Uh, they're all neurodegenerative. They all have a, a, a different cause, uh, but nonetheless still lead to the de degeneration of the brain. So degeneration means I'm losing neurons, right? I'm losing brain cells. Uh, the movement disorders, and Parkinson's being one type, uh, but there's others, and that's what the concern about with, with uh, Osimin is, is about eight, what we call atypical forms of Parkinson's. So, uh, but still, neurodegenerative condition, uh, Parkinson's affects the uh, certain parts of the brain that control movement, okay, movements. Uh, processing of that information that comes from the higher centers in the brain and, and going through these processing centers and, and out to actually make us do things, uh, movement, 
that's uh, the areas that are affected by it. So there's, in a sense, two broad classifications here. One is Parkinson's, uh, classical Parkinson's, uh, also referred to as, in a sense, idiopathic Parkinson's. Uh, and idiopathic in medicine means, uh, it's a fancified word that means we don't know what's causing it, okay? Uh, you know, take your pills and move on, you know, sort of thing, because we don't know what's doing it. Uh, but most Parkinson's fits that category, and most, most of it's very, uh, quote, typical because it's had this typical pattern that we've associated with it. Well, folks that noticed, and I remember this back years ago when I was in med school, 35 years ago, they were talking about a, in an in a area in the West Indies where there was this pocket of people that were being studied who had uh, atypical form of Parkinson's. They had a lot of features of Parkinson's, but they also had a lot of additional features that you didn't see with it. It's called supranuclear palsy uh, is the broadest category of that but they're atypical Parkinson's, okay? And normally, if you look here in the United States, it's like 85% of Parkinson's is, is typical Parkinson's, and only about 4% is PSP. And where you went down there, it was like 50, 60%, like 50 to 60% of these folks that they were looking at down here who, who met the criteria of Parkinson's were atypical and PSP, okay? so. What, what that kind of thing when in the field of medicine it usually prompts you to say, well, gee, I wonder what we're doing here. You know, what is it that's different here versus elsewhere that might be causing it? Um, you also have to marry this, that sort of view, because that ultimately is how we got into this, uh, this area where folks are associating it with uh, aninacin and, and similar compounds. These are, that's the uh, fits those compounds fit into the category of called acetogenins, okay? Acetogenins, and if a lot of folks have at least heard of acetogenins, by now those are the uh, some of the compounds in the skin and the seed, as well as a little bit in the fruit or the pulp of the pawpaw, the bark, the tree, the leaves. All of it has acet acetogenins. Acetogenins is a very broad class of chemical compounds. That's um, not quite unique, but it's very commonly associated with the whole family of plants called the Ananaceae. Ananaceae. So Asimina triloba, which is the American pawpaw, fits into that category, right? Uh, the, uh, there's a couple of other minor species of Asimina in the United States. They're in Florida, uh, but they really aren't like fruit-type fruit, fruit type bearing things that we use for fruit. Asimina triloba is the only real northern example that's non-tropical of the whole family of Ananaceae. All of the other ones fit, they're, they're tropical, right? So that's important in this type of discussion because they've got lots of different species of Ananaceae in the tropic zones. And these, some of these areas of concern are in those tropical zones. They have a lot more uh, exposure, in a sense, because a lot of those species grow, you can have that year round, whereas pawpaw we don't, right, necessarily. Uh, so anyhow, folks started looking at this uh, potential there for uh, using herbal teas made of Ananaceae, like soursop, uh, cherimoya, and, and similar, uh, so a whole variety, custard apple, and all that kind of stuff that is in, in the tropics, okay? And people there have used this for long periods of time in terms of teas, and, uh, but also eating the fruits. But again, one of the other characteristics is they can have this stuff mostly year round, whereas we don't. We've never really had that opportunity because the only, trop the only species here is, is Osimina triloba, and we get it ripe in well, about three or four weeks a year, right? So not long. So we don't have that high exposure. Well, there they've made this connection, presumably. However, the data and the way this thing was studied and collected uh, back in the late 1990s to make these connections, or at least concern about it, was they were doing kind of what we call case control type of study to look at this. And it seemed like the difference here down there in, the, in um, this West, West Indies, Guadalupe, and that type of areas uh, is that They've got these folks with this PSP and atypical Parkinson's, and they, they, it seems like there's probably higher exposure to these aninacin uh, compounds in that group than it is in the Parkinson group. Uh, it was not 
seemingly connected uh, anonations with Parkinson's per se, but it seemed like it was with PSP. This needed a lot more data to be collected, for sure, in, in, in much different ways, okay, such as, okay, looking at large-scale populations of people who consume you know, fair amounts of anonasins uh, or anonaceae species, and then comparing it to those who don't on a regular basis. And look then and see who, you know, follow those, that group of people long term and see, you know, hey, how many people develop Parkinson's and PSP or these types of things and those who don't, if that makes sense. That was suggested but never done. This is kind of right now kind of a bit of a dead end in terms of any new data coming out. Last things were kind of in the uh, mid, I don't know, 2015, 2018, something like that was the last thing. So we haven't seen anything recent coming out. I would also point out that there's pockets of populations of people all over the world where we also see higher concentrations of people with PSP. Uh, they, there they've been linked to things like heavy metal exposure. Uh, 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 pl chromium plating has been associated with this, so people working in these areas where there have been high concentrations of exposure to these toxins, uh, plating industries and stuff like that. Uh, there's been pockets of this in France, pockets of it in uh, England and elsewhere that people have studied. So the common thing that seemed like, you know, it looks like it is with Parkinson's in general, is, or any other neurodegenerative condition, is that they are neurodegenerative. There's probably these compounds in the right genetic setting that allows for this to happen. Uh, the, the, there was one single case report here in the United States where somebody would cons supposedly had uh, PSP-like symptoms, right? Uh, as a gentleman who was a grower, had a nursery and had pawpaw, and he, and he consumed probably, by my calculations on this, would have been consuming about 60 fruit or 80 fruit per year during the season. Uh, I don't know, I, I don't eat that many. I, I could grow them, but yeah, maybe, maybe 30. Uh, but there's also lots and lots and lots and lots of people who do eat a fair amount of pawpaw, who I know don't have Parkinson's you know, at least not seeing medically, but yeah, I'm assuming they don't have Parkinson's. So it's a kind of a, you know, an open-ended thing right now. Uh, the, I, the data, you cannot draw firm conclusions from what data has already been published on this. That's for sure. Uh, the, you know, the studies that do need to be done haven't in order to, to kind of in, may even get even closer to being able to say, is this, is this a real issue? I would argue that, just like anything else, overconsumption of any one particular thing is bad for health. Uh, if you drink Mountain Dew long enough, you're going to suffer consequences, right? That's going to guarantee. If you do certain things that way and you do it to excess, it's going to cause problems. It does. And I see this all the time in practice, uh, be it diabetes or any other medical issue, okay? So there are, there are things like this. We, I think, broadly speaking, we should probably you know, not be that terribly concerned about this. I'm not. Uh, I feel perfectly comfortable with you know, using it myself and selling it and whatever. Um, I think folks probably, just like any other thing, don't want to overconsume, uh, just like it would be anything else. Uh, neurotox neurodegenerative conditions are associated with a broad range of things, okay? Uh, be it chemical exposures, but uh, hey, there's lots of data on um, the connections between excess sugar consumption and the development of Alzheimer's disease. That's out, that's well-established data. Uh, deep fried foods to high amounts, very highly associated with uh, things like other neurodegenerative conditions. So this is, a, this is just one of these things I think uh, is begging for a larger scale study to look at and kind of make sense of it better. Uh, in the meantime, you know, I, I, I personally do not have any significant concerns about it. Uh, What's it going to take to get that study kind of on, on uh, happening? To happen? Money. Like anything else, and like what's going to take the money? Uh, 
Like, is this, does it have to come to, like, FDA? Like, they're going to have to initiate it, or? Yeah, these, it's a good question. You know, the, uh, I don't know where that would come from, ultimately. Uh, you know, and, and I actually had at least preliminary con conversations with a few folks, uh, kind of within the Pawpaw sort of connections. Uh, you know, one of the downsides is this type of thing gets out, and it's, you know, there there's, not enough data here to substantiate it. There's simply, we don't have the study to refute, per se, right? You don't, we don't have that. All you can say is, you know, right now, I know lots and lots and lots of people who, anecdotally, who eat lots of pop and don't have Parkinson's, uh, you know. So, you know, who's gonna do it and why and how? Uh, I honestly don't know whether it would come from a grower association, those don't always work well because now you're a biased, right? Biased entity. Mm -hmm. uh, would it come through FDA or somewhere like that? I don't know. I don't know. The FDA and other organizations had their opportunity to look at this data and declined sort of listing pawpaw as a concern that way. Let me put it to you that way. So I don't know because they had. Uh, as my understanding in the past, and other countries had as well. There, you know, there's similar things like our FDAs and all that stuff had the opportunity to kind of weigh in on it and, and decline, you know, saying, hey, we need to put this on a, some kind of a caution list or something like that. Um, sassafras, anybody familiar with that one? Mm -hmm. And saffron, and that concern, uh, you know, the government kind of weighed in on that uh, and quote banned saffron. So you buy sassafras concentrates, right, and uh, that have or saffron free. Uh, I honestly think that stuff was exactly what people pointed out that uh, saffron was a precursor molecule could be easily used to make uh, other drugs of recreational use, <laughs> and that was one of the main reasons that they banned it. Uh, supposedly, uh, I drank sassafras for years. You know, off of our farm, right? I don't know if anyone else did, but you know, he said dig it all the time and try it and make moon several tea. Uh, so, but anyhow, I digress on that. <laughs> Any uh, other yep. questions? Yeah.